Hey there! Are you a tired JavaScript developer? Are you sick of having to learn so many different libraries? Did you piece together to make something working? Maybe you are a burned out React developer or sick of learning the rules of React, different hooks, how they work, and sick of shooting yourself in the foot using use effects. That was me around a year, year and a half ago. And now I see things very differently. And I want to show you the way. In this video, I'll run you through how you can build this really SPA-like website where you can look up different Pokemons and you can see here the experience is very good. You won't have to touch much in JavaScript and you ship very little JavaScript to the client. Your customers will love it and you will love writing this kind of code. In this video, I'll show you how you can make that with Go and HTMX. I'll show you a rundown of how you can set this up. If you want to get a lot more details on the code and how to write it, why you write it that way, you can check that out in the blog below. Let's get started. All right, first things first, let's start a very simple HTTP server in Go. I'll show you how you can do that in maybe four or five steps. The first step is to basically do your imports. Now, we're going to initialize a router. The router is simply what it is. If you are a JavaScript developer, a router is a router. It's a serve mux. It simply just works as a router. Now, we're going to define a handler function on that router for the get method on the root. And that, in this case, we're simply not going to do anything crazy. We're simply just going to send back hello world. Nice. After that, we're going to define a server that will run at uh, port 3000 that is going to use that router as a handler. And finally, we just say listen and serve. And that's all you need to do in, um, in Go to run a server. So if I go back here and refresh this page, I can see that we got hello world. Easy peasy, your server is up and running. All right, cool. Now, instead of sending that, really weird hello world right there. Let's actually render some HTML. Again, very simple and straightforward in Go. First, let's import some stuff. We import the embed module because we need to embed the HTML files into the package or the executable that we will do at the end when we uh, build our Go application. And then we need HTML template to run and render those templates. Now we need to embed a folder called views. Everything that's inside the folder called views is gonna be embedded in a variable called views. And out of that variable, we make it into a template variable called t here. So template.must parse the folder of views, which is being in views right there. Now we have our templates in t. Now what we need to do is basically execute the template, which is called index.html here. And then we simply, if something goes wrong, we just send 500 back to the client. Cool. Now let's have a look at our index of HTML right there. It's very, very simple. All we do is this. We have a, an H1 class that is called Pokemon Cards. Now, if I go back to the browser right there, if I refresh, it becomes Pokemon Card. Super simple. That's how you render HTML in Go. Yes, yes, I know. This is now why you're here and this is that boring. Let's make it interesting. All we need to do, this is just basic HTML really. So let's add some uh, libraries so we can style things properly. I added HTMX right there, and then I added Daisy UI. You can check the links in the description. I added Tailwind CSS. Cool. Next, we need to add some kind of like container, a flex column container, and that will be everything and will align everything to the center. Beautiful. After that, let's move the Pokemon Cars H1 inside of that container, and then let's have a grid with the columns of four and then align to the center again with a gap of five, uh, five pixels. Uh, five rams actually in this case whatever it is and then finally let's add the card that will have the history or the data of any pokemon that we pass into it cool let's save this go there refresh the page and you can see here that we have poke name poke type poke height and poke weight and all that stuff this is a static data right now let's make it dynamic let's go all right the first thing we need to do in order to make this dynamic is to actually fetch the pokemon data let's do that I'm going to use the Poke API. It's an open API, no need to integrate. You simply make a GET request and you're good to go. That's what I'm doing right here. I'm doing HTTP.GET to Poke API, Pokemon name Pichu. I'm starting out with Pichu. What we get back from the HTTP GET is error and a response. We're going to handle the error. If it's not nil, we will send back is an HTTP 500 with a message called unable to grab the Pokemon data. Beautiful. Let's keep going. After that, the response that I get back has to be cast into a specific type. In this case, I have a type called Pokemon. I'm not going to bore you with the details. It's all in the blog post down there. But basically, we have the type that matches whatever data that we get back from the response. After I have this type, I'm making this um, variable called data, and I want to cast this data that I get, uh, sorry, the, the response that I get back into this Pokemon, because I know I'm getting JSON, so I'm using JSON decoder 
of the response body that I get back from the Pokemon API, and I'm decoding that onto the variable called data. If something goes wrong, I'm going to respond back to my client and say I'm unable to parse the Pokemon data because it's screwed in one way or another. And then finally, what I will do, I'm going to change this to data. So what I'm doing here in this line, I'm executing the same template, but I'm now passing a context called data. How can we use that context? Let me show you. Okay, I'm going to slow down here a little bit. Now, if I go back to my index, what I'm doing right now is that I'm passing this data as context into my template. I am able to access anything on that context using a specific notation in Go. It's very similar to a dot notation. So imagine that I'm referring to that context with a main dot. So what I need to do here now, because I know the shape of my context, I know the shape of my data, is I'm going to basically do this. I know that every Pokemon that comes back has a property at the root that is called weight and height. The way I refer to these properties is by using dot weight or dot height. Where is that coming from? It's coming from the, basically from the response. And I know it's there because I made it myself into the type, but that's how you reach out to that context and make it useful. So I, now I have my weight and I know the height of this Pokemon. Now I want to show you how you can loop over a, a, a lists or array. Now, the way you do that is very simple. You just use the range keyword. So I'm ranging over types here. So I'm basically just looping over types. And then inside of each type in this context here has changed slightly. So this dot now doesn't really refer to the main data context, but inside of this range keyword, it actually refers to each one of these types, each element in the array called types. And inside there, I know I have type detail name. So I'm just simply just looping over all the types and rendering each one of them, entering, rendering the name of each one of them. Notice I don't have to deal with keys. I don't have to deal with any of that mess that comes from doing this stuff on the client. I'm on the server right now. I can use really strong um, syntax here with Go. It's very simple. And then finally, I have the, I know that at the root, there is the Pokemon name. And again, in this case, the context here is referred to by dot is actually the data itself. Cool. Let me save this. I'll go back to the browser. All I'm going to do is go and refresh. And that's it. I get Pichu. I get that he's type electric. His height is three. I guess that's three meters, whatever. And the weight is 20. Nice. This is really cool. We got things working. Let's think about how we can get input from the user and then we can make another request to Pokemon and render another piece of HTML. Let's do that. Okay, to take input from the customer, I'm gonna use a form. I'm gonna add a normal HTML form. I'm not using Formic, I'm not reaching out to a weird library. I am literally just using the platform. Let's have a look. All I have to do here is just, I'm gonna add a card. It's a small div that I'm giving it the class of card. This is coming from Daisy UI. Check them out in the description, by the way. They are fantastic. And inside that card, I'm simply just adding a form. Again, this is just basic HTML. Not doing anything crazy here at all. So inside this form, I'm going to have an H2 that basically says add more. And underneath that, I'm going to have an input. And this input has a name of Pokemon. This is important for the step that we're going to do later. And then finally, I'm going to add a, a submit button. Now again, Remember, I'm not doing anything crazy here. I'm not dealing with the use effect. I'm not using with the, dealing with the on submit event. I am literally just writing HTML. It's the simplest way to do it. I'm using the platform. If I go back here and refresh this page, I get this very simple card with a form inside of it. Now, right now, this form doesn't do anything. Let's fix that. All right, the plan for us now is to basically get that input from the user from this normal HTML form, and I'm going to send that back into our backend in a new endpoint, in a post endpoint. And that endpoint is going to talk to the Poku API, grab a Pokemon and respond back with some HTML. How that HTML is gonna show up here, that's a little bit later. For now, let's focus on adding that other new endpoint in our backend. So I'm here back into my main.go. This is my actual server that I'm running right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add another handler function into my router. So on my router, I'm adding another handler function and notice this handler function is basically handling post request to the route called Poke. In that case, what we're going to do is basically, I am expecting a form, so I'm going to parse that form. So remember, notice how I'm calling r.parseform right there. 
there's an issue, I'm going to throw an error. Happy days. After this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a get request to the Poke API with the value named Pokemon that I am getting from that form. So after parsing the form, I know that I can get the form value of Pokemon. Notice that this Pokemon is coming from here. It's the input that we have on the front end. Beautiful. After this, I'm going to handle the error. If there's an error, I'm going to say, hey, actually, that Pokemon does not exist, for example. And then I'm going to have a new variable called data. And again, this is the shape of Pokemon. It's a struct. And then I'm going to decode uh, the value that I get back from the response to body onto this data uh, property, the data, data variable right there. And if I have any issues doing that, I'm going to throw an error as well. And finally, I'm going to execute a template exactly like what we did in the main uh, index.html. But in this case, I'm rendering something called response to the HTML. So it's a slightly different uh, HTML file. Obviously, we're going to go through it right now. And in this case, I'm sending back the data, the new Pokemon that I have. Beautiful. Now, let's have a look at that response to the HTML. Right now, it's absolutely empty. What I'm going to do is actually super simple. I am simply just going to uh, paste back the, the article that I had from before. So this is basically that same exact article that I have here. It's the card object, right? It's the card HTML that gets rendered right there. Now, before we get into how we can use the front end to do this call and get it back and render it on the browser, let's test this first of all using curl. So I'm doing a curl request uh, to poke, a post request with curl to poke, and I'm sending data Pokemon equals Pikachu. If I do this request, what I can see here is that I'm getting back the HTML and it's being populated right there with the values coming back from the Poke API. So now I know my endpoint is working. Let's have a look on how we can use HTMX to make this seamless on the front end where the customer can simply put the number of uh, the name of the Pokemon and everything will just happen automatically. Now, the way HTMX works is by basically helping you replace a specific part of the DOM with whatever HTML that you get from the server. Now that we do have our endpoint, we are sending back that new, uh, new card. What I want to do now is ask this form on submission that HTMX is going to replace a part of the DOM with whatever it gets back from that endpoint. Let's see how easy it is to do this with HTMX. I'm going to go back to this form here. This form here right now is, is not very special. It's just basically an HTML form. I'm going to give it superpowers, literally, by adding a couple of properties here. So I'm going to say this, hx.post. What this means is that HTMX is going to uh, do this action, which is a post request to slash poke, and on this trigger of this basically element here, which is form. And by default, the trigger of form is basically on submit. So what happens here is that I'm saying to HTMX, when this form is submitted, take the value of the form, take the values from that form and make a post request to slash poke. Nice. And then what comes back from there, what I want you to do with it is to swap the outer HTML. So basically, it's not that I'm pasting or replacing whatever is inside the form. I'm actually replacing the whole HTML. Not only that, what I actually want to do, not only replace this form, I actually want to replace the whole card. The way I can do that is by basically saying to telling HTML, HTMX that the target here is going to be a div called target div. Uh, target uh, target div. In this case, this div is going to be a uh, disputable div right here, and I'm going to call this, I'm going to give it a property of div of ID called target div. So basically what these literally couple of lines are saying, on submit of this form, make a post request with the value of this form, basically into slash poke right there. What you get back, make sure that you replace the whole HTML of the target, which in this case, target div, which is basically this div. I'm going to save this. I'll go back to my browser right there. And then I'm going to type Pikachu here. I'm going to type this enter. And you can see here right now that what happened there is that I'm simply just replacing the whole card with whatever I get back from uh, the, the back end. Let me try something else. Charmander. Beautiful. So I'm getting another uh, Pokemon right there. Awesome. But you can see, obviously, that I'm actually taking away that form. So how can we fix that? Let's have a look. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. There's a couple of different ways that you can do to fix this issue. I'm going to show you the simplest, most straightforward way of doing this. And this is so 
simple, you're going to feel like, oh, really, you can do that. You can actually do that. What I'm going to do is basically because I understand that I'm actually replacing um, this basically div here, which is basically a target div or whatever comes back. I'm going to actually replace it with a card and then I'm going to add the form. So what I'm going to add here is I'm going to basically just take this uh, card here. So basically this new card. Uh, right there. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go to the end, give it some space. I'm going to paste that here. That's it. So what I'm saying here right now is basically, you remember that card that we are replacing? Don't just replace it with the card that has the Pokemon data, but also add next to it another card that has the form. So let me try to refresh this and try again. So what I'm going to do here is Pikachu and boom, I get one more form and then Charmander. I get another one, and then there's uh, another one that I like, which is called Raichu. Uh, uh, yes, this is <laughs> the advanced Pikachu. And that's how simple it is to do this in, in, in a stack that is very simple and straightforward, like go on HD Max. There's a lot more things to do, a lot more details that you can add, a lot more sprinkling of like magic, literally, that you can add on top of this. But I'm not going to go through it. I just want you to see how easy it is for you to run something like this. And with a couple of feet lines of code, you can make a form super interactive that way. Also, notice that we are moving away our logic and complexity to the back end. This could be a good thing. It could be a, a, a bad thing. It just depends. But my point here is that there are different ways. You don't have to mess with the state on the client side. You don't have to do any of the stuff for simple fetch and render. To me, if it's a simple fetch and render, this works perfectly. If you want to do a lot more interactivity, then you can sprinkle some JavaScript on the client to get the interactivity that you want. And maybe in another video, I'll talk to you how you can do that without even using React, with doing something very simple. Um, there are many options, but we can go through them in another video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you want to go through all the code and details, you can have a look uh, through the blog post in the description below. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, let me know. Otherwise, subscribe and wait for more. Thank you.